from telephone number 8476 received on Thursday, September 3rd at 3.45 p.m. Hi, Mitch. This is Ryan. I contacted you through an email one time asking you about uh, the flat polyurethane you're using. And uh, I've since done some research and, you know, got some products. They say they don't make it flat, but I'm having no luck. And I'm just wondering uh, what products you use to, to flatten it. It's fun. Not, nobody seems to know anything about this, even my finishing guys. So um, if you get a chance and you wouldn't mind giving me a call, I'd appreciate it. I was trying some hood product out of Pennsylvania, and I don't know if I'm doing it right or if it's just something I can't find. So my name is Ryan, and it's 896. Thank you. To reply, press 4. To repeat, press 5. To forward a copy, press 6. To delete your message, press... This is a woodworking emergency. Kitty, you don't even care, do you? Ryan, I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't always check my messages on the phone, so I let that one go. So, flat polyurethane. I've been in your shoes, I know what it's like, I've tried all kinds of products, and plus you gotta pay shipping on flammable liquids, which isn't cheap. So, you know, experimenting with all these products that you don't know what it's gonna do, it's very frustrating. I've been there. So in this video, it's gonna be real quick, I'm gonna show you how to make flat polyurethane. That's right, I'm giving away all my trade secrets for free, just because I can. Okay, in this video I'm going to show how to make flat polyurethane from Minwax clear satin. Now this process doesn't only work with Minwax products, I've used it with water-based varnishes and other brands and it works just as good. Basically, in theory, what makes the polyurethane flat is an additive that's put inside. It's actually a microcrystalline silica particle. And what it does is it diffracts light on the surface and sends it in all different directions. And that would cre that's what dulls the sheen of the final varnish. Okay, so the more particulate you put in, the less gloss is reflected on the surface. So in theory there's two ways that you can make flat polyurethane. One is you increase the particulate concentration by adding more of the microcrystalline powder or the other way is to increase the concentration of particulates by removing liquid out of the container and that's what I'm going to do in this process the uh, concentration of powder inside, there's actually not that much of it to create the effect that you want, so uh, it's actually very, very sensitive, and you could add too much uh, to create you know, more of an effect than you really want. So it's actually v more reliable to remove the liquid uh, and just use the concentration that comes standard with the Minwax brand, because they measure it out very carefully so that they get a consistent result with all the products. So, um, so yeah, so what you're going to need to start, you're going to need some containers. I like these containers the best. These are juice bottles. And the type of plastic that you're going to use to store oil-based products has to be selected carefully. This plastic is PET, P-E-T-E, -E, and this type of plastic is has the highest oil resistance and it's the best product to use for storing oil-based products. You can also use HDPE which is high density polyethylene but you can see after a while it gets a little bit soft. Uh, it will work but the better product, the best plastic to use is PEAT. And I like these juice bottles the best because they have a nice big cap on it that I can kind of grab onto and it gives me more torque for opening and closing the bottle. Sometimes it gets kind of crusty and you need to have a little bit of torque to be able to open this up. So I like these caps the best. 
and the type of plastic works very good for storing liquids. So, and I also have some used food containers, some glass jars, and this is what I'm going to use to store the flat polyurethane that I'm going to use for my top coat. I store them in individual glass containers. These are 16 ounce salsa jars, and this jar is 32 ounce. So my formula for making flat polyurethane is to remove half of the liquid on top, transfer it to this bottle, and then the remaining liquid on the bottom is your flat polyurethane. And then that gets transferred to these smaller glass containers so that they store better. You'll notice I have this marked April 2014. So this has been sitting in my shop for over a year. Uh, and that's one of the things that you gotta make sure that your product is nice and settled. If you're just buying it off the shelf, you don't know how long it's been there. It may have been restocked just the day before and it may have just come right from the factory. So it may be pretty well mixed up. And during transportation, things get uh, jostled up a bit. Uh, so in order to make sure that all, that all the concentration of particulate is settled, you wanna leave it for at least a couple months and just have it sit undisturbed. So this is over a year old. I know it's very well settled. Uh, so what I'm going to do is open it up, transfer the liquid, and show you how this works. So when you're skimming off the polyurethane here, you want to do it very, very slow, very carefully, because you don't want to create any turbulence inside the can. You don't want any of that product that's on the bottom to... So these bottles are not quite 64 fluid ounces, they're 59. So they jip you out of five fluid ounces if you think this is a half gallon. So it's not quite a half gallon. So I'm just gonna fudge it here. Just add in what I think might be four or five ounces. Should be about a half a cup. Alright, so I write cut on this part. I call it cut polyurethane because I take the gallon and I just cut it like a deck of cards. Okay, so the product that's remaining in this can is your flat polyurethane. So we're almost done. Now you can see you can see all the goop that's on the bottom. This is this is all your your resin and your stuff, all all that silica is in there. So all the concentration of particulates is all on the bottom here. So I'm going to mix this up really good. Now just as a note, I still use this product that I take off the top. This is the product that I mix in with stain. God damn it. I mix in my one to eight parts stain to that mixture and I use that for the first or second coats and it works just fine as a product uh, and then for the top coat I use what's in the bottom of this can here for the varnish and that's what gives it its final appearance. The first coats that you put on bare wood are going to soak in all the way pretty much 
so it's good that I can use this product up and it just so happens that it, the ratio works out really good because um, all this stuff I use up I, I don't really accumulate it All right, folks. That's how that's how it works. One gallon of Minwax satin gives you a half gallon of dead flat polyurethane, plus an extra half gallon of stuff that you can mix with stain or just use for your base coats doing an oil base finish. So it's a good process. I don't waste any product, and it turns out dead flat every time. Sometimes for darker colors like black. I'll add a little bit more of the cut polyurethane component uh, just to give it a little bit more gloss because on darker colors the dead flat sheen will actually make it look a little bit pasty so it's okay to add a little bit of extra gloss into it and then for the lighter colors it, it doesn't really matter so I just keep it the dead flat so that's this video I'm not going to do a sample I'm kind of in a hurry right now, so I just wanted to get this video done. Okay, fine. Maybe I will do a sample. So this is a sample of dark green paint. I already have the varnish on it, so this is what the flat varnish should look like. Very low sheen. So I'm going to apply all three of these products. This is the flat polyurethane. This is the cut polyurethane, which came off the top of the gallon. And this is some satin polyurethane that I already have mixed up. I'll start with the cut poly. Now this should be just purely gloss. It shouldn't have any light reflection in it because it doesn't contain any particulate matter. Just to make this clear, this isn't actually gloss polyurethane. It actually has a lower resin content. Uh, and so it's not going to be quite the same as what you would get out of gloss. So it's going to be like a low resin polyurethane and it makes it a little bit softer but it works perfectly fine for a base coat that soaks into the wood. So I would not recommend using this for a top coat on anything. Okay, so I've got my product on here. You can see that when it goes on, it's always glossy. So the sheen will develop after the surface flashes over. You want results? I've got results. Here it is. I had the sample dry in a couple hours. Got some cat hair in it. Told you, don't have a cat in your wood shop. So this is the gloss. This looks just as wet. It's still a little sticky. This is the dead flat varnish. This is the Minwax satin. And then this one is gloss, which is the cut polyurethane that comes off the top. So this sample here was the original sheen before I put all of these other varnishes on this other sample here. 
these these were two matching finishes uh, so you can see the difference in color uh, this green looks a little bit lighter than this green but that's just a difference in the sheen I just added a slight higher concentration of the gloss into the mixture to do this varnish um, and I do that on darker colors so that you don't get that pasty effect because if you make it too flat it actually lightens the color a little bit that wraps up my long and detailed video about a very simple process but as you can see you can get a lot of effects that are controllable by controlling the amount of liquid which controls the concentration of particulates that gives you all these effects so hope you enjoyed watching this process has solved a lot of problems for me so hopefully it can make your product better and more controllable and not have to rely on buying expensive decorative finishes to do very simple things you know you, you would never get any of this information from reading the back of a can of varnish they don't tell you what's in this stuff but it's very simple and a lot of the products are exactly the same they do the same thing so using simple I'm just what the hell am I doing